Welcome to the Future Fabrics Expo 9.5, COVID edition. Um, we are here in London with a physical in-person showcase showing the best practice sustainable sourcing solutions. And we're looking forward to a positive future material world and we're really excited to be able to bring this hybrid edition to you uh, as an interim edition. And of course, there'll be a strong digital component as well. So do please check in with us every single day because we'll have really exciting content. But physically, what can you expect? We've uh, managed to curate uh, an amazing showcase for you. We have got a plethora of new materials across all different fibre categories and a very special showcase around regenerative agriculture called Nature Positive Materials. That's our most exciting one. And of course, innovations. There's a good, smaller than usual innovation hub. So I think we're very excited. We're extremely excited. The whole team has been working really hard to bring to you, we believe, the most exciting material showcase anywhere, actually. So we've been very, very carefully scouring the globe. We've been working really closely with suppliers to bring to you the latest innovations and commercially available materials um, available today. Thank you. See you there. <laughs> yes, hello, hi, my name is Cyril and I'm the founder and CEO of Parley for the Oceans. Oh, we started nine years ago and it feels like an endless period of time, on the other hand, like nothing. So change is suddenly happening. Things that we were promoting for years are suddenly in people's minds and expectations are growing. People now want to see replacements of plastic and I'm the first one to be happy of that. We want plastic to be gone. We want exploitative business practices, harmful materials, ingredients to be gone, to be the past. We want to leave behind the toxic age. You want to really leave it behind and never return, never go back. Because these materials, these ingredients for our economy that we created over the last 50 years, they're destroying our future. They're destroying our presence. They're destroying life on this planet. They're disturbing the sensitive interconnectivity that allows the ecosystems on this blue magic planet to provide the chemistry for us to live, for nature to exist. And we feel that. I think now pretty much everybody on this planet knows that our survival is at stake. We've experienced over the last 14, 16 months that we are fragile, way more fragile than we thought, that little viruses can actually knock us out. What else is out there that can hit us hard? And we, the material innovators, we, the creators, we are encouraged now more than ever to use that moment and open the door to a new age, to a new era of materials, to call out the material revolution, to let all these harmful, toxic ingredients go. And also to start a new way of doing business, a new economy that is based on collaboration, that is based on eco-innovation. And collaborating sounds beautiful, but it isn't easy because we are programmed to compete. Even in the environmental sector, probably more than even in the private sector, we are fighting each other. We are fighting for funds, recognition, network. And that is not what we should be doing. We should collaborate. We should form the most impactful, the biggest collaboration network that ever has been formed. Because we're connected by this willingness to live. We want to live, we want to survive, and also we want to have a lot of fun. And what is more beautiful than be surrounded by like-minded people? So today for me, this moment of opening the conference, uh, a sustainable angle, which is an important gathering point, a collaboration space for future technologies, as I might want to call it, future materials that might come from the total past of this planet, being reinvented, reshaped, rediscovered, or the first time in history deciphered. I think this is the moment where we should unite. We should just say, hey, we are on the same boat here. And yes, some of us have different opinions than others. 
And yes, some are impatient, demanding, some are promising things, which are not there yet. But I think we need a game plan. Otherwise, we're gonna reproduce the same mistake that happened with materials like plastic, fossil fuel, and other things that we keep burning and using. Because we're gonna not have a standard for these new materials. And then suddenly the market will just decide what to promote, what to spread, and the smartest business people will define the next standards. And I think this is the moment of being enthusiastic but skeptical and coming together and saying, A, we need patience to develop new materials. We need breath and we need funding. And we can't expect new materials immediately have the same quality level, having the same performance. And also in some cases we might have to accept that these new materials are not as pure as we want them to be. But that we should be honest about that. We should speak about it. We should say, listen, I'm trying to achieve this, but I'm here today at this point in time. This is what my, my material does. And I think we should help to educate people out there, help to create realistic expectations. And I feel it starts by us innovators coming together and defining the standards for materials, defining our ambitions, creating this battle shout, this mission statement, and turning that into a project management plan for the next 10 years to come. And together we can drive a material revolution. And together we can drive out all these exploitative, all these harmful and dangerous ingredients that we're using so often today. In this sense, I'm inviting everybody to join us at Palais and to join the conversation, to establish a mutual understanding, a mutual game plan, and attract all these billions and billions of dollars that are needed. And to prepare all these environments that we so urgently need, these testing facilities, these also mind uh, sets, new ideas of how to actually work with new materials, how to support innovators, how to phase new materials into supply chains, how to train designers on new attributes. A new material might be of a different color. You might have to weave it or knit it in a different way, inject it in a different way. You might have to compromise some things. You, have to, might, you might have to, to even accept a new aesthetic. I think it's the time of resetting and recalibrating. And it's definitely the time of eco-innovation. And that's why I'm very grateful to be partnering with you um, from the sustainable angle and to go with you into the future. Thank you for the oceans, climate and life. And thank you so much to Cyril for uh, yet another inspirational um, opening address. Fantastic to have him opening our Expo nine and a half. And following along from that, I'm absolutely delighted to have with me now um, Nikita Jayasuria from, uh, he's the Partnership Director of Parley, and also joined by Vittoria Bionda from Clarici Tessuto, and we're going to be in conversation today to discuss some really interesting innovations that uh, you may not associate with uh, ocean plastic. So welcome to you both, thank you for joining us. And, thank you. Uh, Thank in this you. very special edition of uh, the Future Fabrics Expo, this is a nine and a half edition, so an interim edition, uh, as we're on our way to the 10th Expo, hopefully in 2022. So uh, Nikita Pale is really well known, obviously, for the Ocean Plastic Collaboration with Adidas, and I think it, uh, you know, it attracted an enormous amount of excitement about what was possible, really, with this uh, material waste stream. But I think um, if you could just give us a, a little bit of sort of background in working, when you're working with brands, how do you begin a collaboration like that? Where do you start? 
Um, well, I really, I think the, the collaboration starts with a, a joint vision uh, and it's probably a vision to change the way that we do business going forward. Um, so really that trying to get that initial synergy, let's say is very important for us. And we need to make sure that, you know, our trajectory is the same and we really want to, you know, change the way we do business to, you know, save the planet, let's say, and ultimately as well, save the oceans and prevent their destruction. Um, yeah, that's really the initial starting point where we, we really like to start and yeah. Mm, okay, so, you know, I think that everybody now we're in a space where um, everybody in sustainability, uh, textiles and fashions, quite attuned to the idea of the need to engage with the circular economy, recycle waste materials, and as you say, a, a critical, um, you know, uh, role that you play is in actually cleaning up ocean plastic in order to recycle that material. And, and I think we really associate the, these fibres much, much more with high performance with kind of sportswear and such like but of course today we're joined by Victoria to talk about a collaboration that's maybe not so familiar to people who are following recycled materials and of course Clarici Tessuto Victoria a very historic uh, silk manufacturer that's what Clarici are known for so how did your collaboration when Nikita speaks about synergies how did your collaboration with Pale come about? Um. I guess that uh, the main reason is the fact that the silk is no more uh, something very appeal for the customers in general and the customer even on the high brand customers are interesting in uh, um, making the same things in a different way uh, using different fibers and uh, uh, the challenge for Clarice Tessuto was to show that changement is possible. Uh, this is, uh, change is, uh, is difficult, changing is, is a challenge and we accepted this. So in the last five years, we are trying to change our position on the market and we are not uh, giving the old fashion and way to make fabric, which is a know-how and which is part of our legacy and our DNA. Uh, but we have uh, the future uh, in front of us. And that's mean uh, not only fibers, but making fashion uh, thinking to the planet and thinking about what uh, our um, fashion department, which is one of the most uh, polluting uh, um, department uh, in the world, uh, could be in order to be uh, to, to be a part of a new generation of people uh, that wear luxury things, uh, thinking of uh, of uh, the planet. So I mean, maybe can be something that the people feel feel guilty uh, <laughs> and just yeah. from a psychological point of view, making them feel a little bit guilty. Uh, because they are buying things, expensive things, but uh, a part of this uh, cost is dedicated to save uh, the planet. And yeah. so it started, uh, I guess Nikita was a couple of years ago, maybe more. Yes, yeah, a, a, PV, uh, a PV edition, I guess. Yeah, we did, yeah. Making uh, uh, silk certificated gods and uh, whatever, and then we had the first contact in Paris. And uh, okay, so it's that meeting that I'm kind of thinking about. How does you yeah. know a sort of uh, you know a very sort of um, ecologically focused uh, organization like Parley doing incredible good in cleaning reach out and make these? How do you identify the, these partners? Well, you just well. well. Yeah, we, we, we believe, uh, you know, purpose is the new luxury, you know, um, that truly is. And I think that's what fits in so well with Clarici as well. Um, and we see our ocean plastic as a premium material because, you know, not only has it, you know, conserved and, uh, you know, protected a coastline in the oceans in the process of collecting it, um, you know, it's prevented virgin plastic from coming back into the system. Um, and, and it, you know, gives that purpose behind the, the product that we're doing. So, I mean, if it is got a higher price tag, it's because it's actually protected an ecosystem in the process. And I think that's the true cost of, let's say, we wouldn't say, yeah, eco-innovation and, you know, making 
you know, product that is going to help the planet moving forward. Mm. So you're sort of, you're focusing now on really, it's about, is it about trying, you know, through the work that Parley does to make um, this material aspirational? So that it's seen, you know, prior to this, I guess it's being seen as, as oh, it's a secondary material, but now you're kind of making it the premium material through your collaboration. Would be that be the way that you, you see the development of the fiber and the, and the textiles? I think, uh, I think what we're showing is that, you know, in essence, the trash that we collect from the oceans can be turned by through the purpose of, of you know how it was collected and what it's done in protecting can be a luxury can be perceived and come across as a luxury item and if you see the fabrics that Clarici has been producing with our ocean plastic um you know there's there's not a lot, lot of difference between let's say um you know other materials in our ocean plastic and it and it, and it you know the, the material and the quality and everything i mean you can talk into it better victoria is uh, feels super luxury and you know it's proven we've got a few things bubbling in the works where yeah it's 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 coming across as a very good good you know yeah. material and Nikita, sorry, sorry to interrupt to jump in but beside the things you are telling it's very important that the performance are very are excellent because the, the performance are what the brands are asking for the quality are every day higher performance in terms of quality technical and we have seen and the customer is aware of the fact that the technical performance of the yarn we use from parley are perfectly overlapping with the normal um with the normal fibers this is quite uh, interesting as astonishing because maybe you feel more uh, uh, it's okay the fabrics look luxury it's quite the same but then we have the performance so maybe uh, could be figure out that some performance could be lower or not as much has uh, the customer inquiries but after all we tested all the items we produced and they are perfectly ma matching with uh, the technical standard the customer asked for and this is an a2 a very important a2 uh, yeah. which makes the difference for the customer to accept even uh, even uh, the qualities yeah, that's so interesting because obviously here at Sustainable Angle, you know, we get we're getting your materials in. Of course, when we received the first samples, we were super excited to see, okay, what does what does a supplier like Clarici do with a parlay fiber that you know we're very used, as I said, to seeing sportswear type um, fabrics, textiles, different effects there. But seeing your samples and touching them and feeling the nature of the structure, the textile technology. There was one I remember when it first came in, we were like, wow, this actually really looks and it even crushes and feels like silk. So there's something about what you guys do to it from a textile technology perspective that's giving it a really different appeal through your expertise. Uh, so it's interesting, you know, the touch, the feel and the performance is all meeting all of your testing standards. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, that? no, and if you see it, you know, it's from Oak Couture with Iris Van Herpen, where we did a dress last season yeah. to, you know, the highest performance athletes on the kits of Manchester United, Real Madrid, Juventus, you know, so it's it, it's both ends of the spectrum. So it just shows, you know, testament to, you know, what this material, you know, can be upcycled to, to produce and then also testament to the quality that Clarici can produce with their materials, you know, and their manufacturing as well. So interesting. So, you know, I'm, I kind of worked with silk many, many decades ago in the industry. So I'm really familiar with silk, but obviously the new developments that are coming through with all recycled materials, each time we're seeing any type of recycled material, it's, it's somewhat of a revelation. But I uh, did hear in the pre-chat that you've got a super exciting development coming along from those sort of uh, regular weaves and the twills that we were looking at. Uh, Victoria, do you want to tell us about this new, uh, brand new actually, uh, textile development that's currently uh, in work at Clarici? Yeah, first of all, it, we, we, the, 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 the qualities you received are the quality that uh, our uh, design department um, created. So on the basis of what Clerici Testuto is, but the very amazing things, we made a step ahead because we were able to customize 
uh, this kind of qualities. This, this is the difference, in my opinion, uh, because we are uh, developing uh, special qualities for customers. So uh, some brands are asking us to develop their own qualities, their own idea, they, the idea coming from their design team. And we are able to develop with uh, Parley, with Parley Yan. So in my opinion, it's completely a huge step ahead in this, in this kind of, uh, of uh, path we are, uh, we are running. I know it's not simple and because maybe the customers sometimes are, um, asked for incredible things and uh, we were able to do it with a uh, um with a with a parle yarn and nikita received some of them and they are very uh, they are very beautiful i mean uh, we did what the, the customer the, the important customer has to do has to do uh, from print so, yeah. even the print jacquard not only solid so every type of uh, qualities has been able we were able to develop in the with partly yarn yeah and i think uh, but one of the things is as well is when a customer's uh or a, a partner is coming to us for an innovation um what we've been doing with clarici is an innovation so we've started to uh develop an organza which is uh you know a complete innovation uh from both sides it was an innovation from us for getting the yarn fine enough to be used for an organza. And then it was an innovation from Clarici as well to, to weave it in the way that they have to produce it. So I think that in itself was, you know, I think it, you know, came about like three months ago, actually. So the the, the speed of what we've managed to develop this innovation, which, you know, uh, and since I've heard of has never been done in the industry in ocean plastic organza um, is, you know, truly innovating and just showing like, if you if 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 we're challenged, the industry is challenged and ask these questions, we, we can do it. Um, you know. So. Yeah, it's, it's it's not it's not easy. I mean, because uh, uh, when we receive an inquiry, such a challenge in, like an organza, the first time you say no, it's a, it's a unbelievable. We cannot do it. At the, we, we tested several uh, several uh, opportunities, and then uh, we made it. I mean. Uh, we are just uh, finalizing the finishing of the qualities. And so we are so proud um, <laughs> when, when we see the possibility and we did it. And I want to say that there is also a team working with, uh, with Nikita, um, very, very propositive with the type of yarns, uh, with, they are always very, collaborative uh, although maybe they are not uh, prepared for some kind of uh, of questions that are why uh, that we did we and we do in order to get the right yarn uh, but it's a really um, great team and there is always a collaboration and uh, mixing mixing up the, the information so it's a growth, a mutual growth. Uh, that, uh, and, and, that's, and, and that's the strength of a great partnership is really where, you know, both teams are working together for, a, you know, a mutual goal, you know? Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think, I think it's very important to have that understanding and being able to sort of lean forward and take a risk as well uh, to get where you want to be. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's not always easy, but that's the challenge that we have to do and face because it's, it's you know, Eventually, you know, I could see the future that virgin plastic, you know, shouldn't be a thing, you know, in fashion, full stop, you know, you look at Adidas, they've committed by 2024 to be virgin plastic free. So you kind of look at the industry and go, why isn't the whole industry doing that? And I'm sure it's only a matter of time before there's legislations with the governments that that may be the, the case. And, you know, Adidas has been a leader in that, in that case, but I think, you know, preparing ourselves in the industry to to really for this whole culture change around materials, I think is very important. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, fantastic and really inspirational to hear about your collaboration and this drive to use sort of, um, you know, expertise and, and and really, really be committed to the collaboration is, is a very, very inspirational to hear. So after you've um, mastered the, the beauty of organza, because it's such a very unique type of, uh, fabric anyway, even in, in its silk iteration and to have it in parlay yarn, I can't 
wait to see it. Um, what's what's next? What's next for you both? Are you going to continue this collaboration and just keep testing the boundaries of what both the yarn and the technology? Of course, we will. Next next step, Nikita, is to make up cycling with your fabric. So it will be, <laughs> <laughs> it will be a step ahead, uh, taking something woven with poly yarn and yeah. uh, to make up cycling. So yeah. every time we have to look forward to get something different. I hope this collaboration will uh, continue in a, in a new in a new challenge. Uh, um, I guess that we speak very often, me and uh, very often me and Nikita, and just asking about other group and what is going on, uh, how we are going on. So I guess that uh, something new will happen for Cleucci Tessuto. Uh, the collaboration is something very positive. So hoping that in the future, I mean, uh, with, with Parley as well. I know it's it's very difficult because maybe I would like Nikita come here to see the facilities or something, someone of uh, Parley team in order just to make a, to, to, to see and to verify how we work, how we treat your yarn. I, I do hope that maybe soon this could be a dream come true because I guess it could be quite nice. It's been it's been very tricky with the restrictions, obviously. Since we've uh, yeah. coined our partnership, it was like at the very beginning of, I think it was just after the first sustainable angle, which was uh, last last yeah. year, ja yeah. January. January. You know? we so. were in the same. Uh, in the same side. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to a visit to the facility uh, since then. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, for us, you know, ocean plastic is where we are at the moment, where we are, you know, cleaning up the plastic from the oceans, educating, you know, it's not just about material, it's about educating as well and building communities in the pro and supporting communities in the process. Um, and today, you know, we are, you know, producing ocean plastic, but, you know, we're always looking to the future to new materials. And that's why we always find it beneficial to partner with you guys at the sustainable angle as well to understand what new materials are out there and see how we could potentially work with uh, new partners and new materials and, you know, um, you know, looking at the new material to place plastic overall, you know, um, but uh, yeah, so it's, but it, it's, it, it, it's a journey, you know? So right now we're replacing virgin plastic and the journey is to invent a new material overall. Um, but yeah. Definitely, yeah. Really, I'd work really, with you. Yeah, exciting time to be there. And obviously, you know, in the showcase, okay, we don't have a huge showcase this time, but we're, the whole team at Sustainable Angle, super excited. This is our, really our first expo since all the lockdown, even though it's a, a half edition. But it's going to be an opportunity for, you know, Parley will have a presence there so anybody can come along and, and speak to you guys at Parley further about projects. Victoria, the, the Clarici fabrics that we just spoke about earlier will all be on display there so people can come and touch and feel and learn about them. And hopefully soon, I guess, we'll get hold of the organza. I can't wait to see that. I think that sounds so super exciting. It would be a surprise. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just want to give you both the opportunity if there's anything else that you would like to say on this first day, this opening day of the uh, Nine and a Half Expo, please go ahead. Anything else exciting you've got coming up, that now's the time to share. Nikita? Are you going first, Victoria? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, nothing, nothing pops into my head just yet, but I mean, I'm just looking forward to, to, to meeting people and I guess getting face to face with people, even though it may be a more intimate environment, which is actually going to be better, I personally think, um, and really talking about how we can, you know, work together on changing the way that we run business and, uh, you know, look at it from an eco innovative way to really, you know, change the way that change the culture, let's say, around it all, yeah. you know, and, you know, Absolutely. raising Absolutely. awareness around protection of the oceans and our planet. Yeah, and as far as Clevici Tessuto concerns, uh, we start this uh, this new era, if you want, and now we are engaged in trying to get a sustainability report uh, uh, okay. in the next year. So this year it's a bit difficult, but we are quite sure that in 2022 we will be able to. So this is something very special to Clevici Tessuto. That means that uh, as Nikita is, is saying is is a changing of way 
is a changing of mentality is the, is the people that think in another way. Uh, a company which wants to be, which want to be in a different way. And a sustainable angle has its role, its role in this uh, in this kind because it was uh, from there that we started to think about and to uh, to be differently aware of uh, what the textile department is represent or could be for a better future. It can be something very uh, déjà vu if you want, no? Because uh, everyone looks like so. Uh, is telling the same things, but uh, when you start to make them and not to tell, just to tell, that's make the difference. And so you can you can only go a, a, ahead. You cannot go back on your position. This is what it's very worth about. Sure, I really look forward to seeing that report sometime next year. And obviously, we'll 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 do a blog, I'm sure, about it. So we'll share that with um, you know with everybody who's connected to us. And yet, just further, I suppose, to being in a physical showcase, which let's face it, we're beyond excited about. And the value, as you say, Nikita, of fostering those relationships and those collaborations where you just, uh, it's very difficult to replicate that, you know, in the digital realm. That's what we found, the people you just come across and you start having conversations and you connect with, you, you know, the only place you can really do that is in the sort of, the, in the real life space, do it really effectively. I mean, of course, there's lots of online kind of digital business dating going on, but I think it works really, really well in, uh, in the expo showcase, uh, as you said before. So even though we're smaller scale, we're really looking forward to um, helping to facilitate those conversations and collaborations. And yeah, so looking forward to uh, working with you further and seeing the results of your collaborations and innovations in the future. Oh, of course. Of Thank, course. You. Well, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Uh, yeah, Thank you're you. very, very welcome. Victoria, I'll see you online and Nikita, I'll see you in real life. <laughs> okay, take and care. Do, do join yeah. us. Oh, bye. 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 bye.